I want to invite up my good friend, Theo van de Sand, who has uh, actually shot the first project ever with uh, Vericam in the field and has agreed to join us tonight. So let's welcome up Teo. Hi, hi. Good evening. Thanks, buddy. You're such a, you, 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 it's, it's really great to have you. This is really, really perfect. So thank you so much for coming. No problem. So tell, tell me what your reactions of that, other than the fact I'm not a very good DIT. Now, um, first of all, I would have loved this evening before I shot, because oh, uh, when I, um, I, I got an offer to do a pilot for uh, Amazon, and um, they uh, requested for me to work with a camera on uh, uh, at least 4K resolution. That is a um, um, request that they have. And I thought, what, what, what's going on? Why should I work on a camera um, uh, that is 4K resolution if I have an Alexa uh, that I know and uh, gives me enough quality to do that? But um, at the same time, I thought, wait a minute. 12 years ago, we tried with the ASC Technology Committee to um, to fight what was going on with HD, um, uh, where uh, uh, Sony tried to um, change the um, uh, the whole process of filmmaking uh, because HD was going to be good enough to make features, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we we uh, in that time we uh, tried to um, tell the community that. 4K was going to be more or less the quality that we had with 35 millimeter film. Um, this, so for us, we, we kept on fighting to to get that um, resolution. Uh, now we we are with this camera. I think we are there. That we have a complete um, a complete 4K uh, workflow uh, from the beginning to the end. So that's an excellent point. So. Basically, in terms of, and it's 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 kind of like what I said. It's not about um, which camera is the best. It's which camera is the best for what purpose. So exactly. why don't you tell us? I know it, when we did the uh, the the pilot together, we there were some very interesting shots in, in that club scene, for example, in that bookstore scene. So tell me how this camera was the right tool for those shots. Yeah, still I have to tell you first that when when I. Um the day later, saw the Panasonic camera uh, uh, demoed at the AAC Clubhouse. Uh, I, I played with it for for uh, a minute and saw it on a monitor and decided to uh, this was going to be my solution: uh, a 4K camera that uh, that could work on an ASA 5000 because I I had some locations that were pretty dark and I would be able to work with uh, less light and still uh, still work with it. So. The, my first um, location was in um, was the old bookstore. The, sorry, the last bookstore in downtown, but has a uh, tremendous uh, dark uh, at atmosphere. So we we weren't we wouldn't be able at all to shoot there um, without an uh, ASA of uh, uh, five thousand. I had measured it with my five D Canon camera, and um, and I found that uh, that was a s that was a possibility. The result of the um, demo um, was really impressive on the on the monitor. So I um, uh, the first day of shooting, we went to the to this bookstore, and uh, we um, uh, I immediately went for five thousand days. Um, that gave me uh, uh, I was confident enough that after having played with it, that it uh, was gonna be all right. Um, we we discovered um, though when we had shot it that there are uh, it was a very fast learning curve by the way because you have to deal with uh, things that you never thought about like what you saw um, a few minutes ago when the tally light was still on the <laughs> the the subject was completely uh, polluted by the light of the tally light and this kind of elements where you never have to deal with you have to uh, you have to uh, consider so we we shot. Um, the scene on 5000 ASA, the, the director couldn't read the script. Uh, it was too dark. And the monitors showed an image that was completely normally lit. But, uh, <laughs> and it was, uh, I was back uh, being a musician because nobody understood how that dark atmosphere could be a normally lit scene. Uh, that was, that I was pretty happy with it. Then we 
the, the evening afterwards uh, with the dailies, we went uh, to, because I, I saw some noise that I was not happy with, uh, that I hadn't expect, and um, we, uh, we went into that. And um, we discovered that we have to deal with completely different uh, elements. Uh, there's an, a type of noise that, is, uh, that we never dealt with, is shot noise. That is a uh, noise that, um, that has to do with the very little amount of light that, is, uh, that hit the pixels. And that is not um, has nothing to do with the noise that you saw when you upgrade from 800 to 4,000. 4, so that just has to do with, uh, with, with other elements. Uh, the amount of light, the amount of photons that hit the uh, pixel. So um, to get around that, um, I, I figured out that it was more or less the same as when I would uh, uh, expose 35 millimeter film for the release print. Because um, you know that 35 millimeter film had uh, dailies and had the best uh, quality image that you ever would see. But that's not what the people would see. The people would see in um, and print of the internegative, and to avoid um, to avoid uh, the, the grain in the in the final release print, you would add a little bit of uh, fill in light uh, to uh, to the shooting to the to the to the shot um, to avoid the extra grain. It's the same here, so you have to have a little trick to uh, avoid that uh, shot noise and uh, to get an uh, image that uh, that is practically. Uh, noiseless, and that's what you saw, by the way, now here. So, Teo, one last question. Um, you and I talked a lot about the advantage of the in-camera proxy files as well. Uh, that wasn't available when we did the pilot. So, tell us how, as a DP, you would actually. I mean, you, first of all, Teo's never had that feature because it doesn't exist, and he just would not stop talking about how badly he needed it, which is, of course, the way people are. So this is something you clearly really want really bad because you wouldn't shut up about it. So <laughs> what is it, how would you use this, this proxy option? Now, uh, of course, the, the three uh, slots in the camera are unique and, and very well to use because um, um, I, would, I would use everything from the camera. The, the 4K would be absolutely negative, would never be touched. The 2K would be, as, as said, used for editing and uh, and the LUTs and uh, the whole post-production, because editors work on a much lower uh, resolution than that, so they will, will be very happy with the 2K. And then all the things that you can do on the, on the SD cards would be uh, very, uh, very quick uh, accessible on the set. Uh, when you, for example, are in the seventh day and you want to match a shot that is shot on the first day, you can just, uh, uh, you have it simply your own computer, you can, uh, you can just uh, dig into that and, uh, and and work with that. So so this this three um, slots in the camera is a complete uh, a complete workflow. And that that was for me. Uh, I couldn't work with it yet uh, when I um, suggested to uh, uh, to Doug uh, if it was uh, asked Doug if it was possible to work with the camera. Um, he and also Michael said there are certain things not 100% ready in that time that I'm talking about uh, three weeks ago. Uh, there was not 120. There was no 120 frames yet. There was no 2K slot yet. There was no. What was Wi it? Wireless. Yeah. Wireless was not there. The cable to connect the uh, front and the back was wasn't uh, there yet. But all this element I didn't really need yet. So I was anxious to uh, work with the camera like that, and I was very happy with that. I must say, it was, uh, I uh, I'm a fan. So you're saying that uh, it's interesting because the the proxy module, the proxy recording for you is actually a cinematographer's tool, and that's really what we're after because it's, it's something that can satisfy a need for cinematographer and post-production, and both of you can have that. And because it can make multiple proxies, you can actually have different flavors in your proxy. Some yes, people you might have to want keep track of it. Some but people might want but uh, every slot in this camera is, uh, is uh, very useful for us. I mean, to have a 4K as negative, uh, it's just simple, you're negative that you don't have to touch. And, and at the same time, uh, because everything goes with metadata. And in the, in the 2K that you can give that away, that is very fast. Uh, you can very work very fast with this. You can give that away to the post house. They can make uh, promos from that. They can, uh, they can do use it for advertising. They can do everything they want. Yeah. And at the same time, your 4K is in fact the asset of the studio and the asset of the network to fall back to, like 35 millimeter was. And 
uh, as you know, Dallas could be remastered uh, on HD, and uh, any show that was done on one uh, one inch tape was gone. So that was, in my opinion, the 4K uh, as it is now in this camera. Um, it's, it's for me the circles round. Yeah. When I started my career, it was all film, and I felt for the first time that I'm now in this circle that is all 4K as a uh, basis. So for me, the circle's wrong, so it's time to stop probably. <laughs>